Shavuot to everybody. <clears throat> it is my uh, distinct honor and pleasure to fulfill the role of uh, presenting, you know, with a little something from the yeshiva, to express our Akhara Satov. Um, but there's another aspect of what we're doing that we just like to highlight. Akhara Satov, of course, is the primary <coughs> element of Yiddishkeit, foundation for everything that we do. But I was thinking, what other mitzvah are we fulfilling this evening? How does it fit into the broader category of the mitzvahs that HaKadosh Baruch gives us? And I think that it's appropriate to read a Rambam. The Rambam says, to visit the sick, to comfort the mourners, to be involved with funerals, to accompany your guests when they leave. In minakol. This is the chok that Avram Avinu set for us, and the schar of accompanying someone is greater than all of the other mitzvahs. And this is the derech hachesed that Avram Avinu taught us. Now, the mitzvah to be milaveh, a guest. So we understand that if the guest is going on a dangerous road, we have to give him supplies, we have to help him, give him moral support for the challenges he's about to face. But there's a mitzvah of to be malave, your guest, even if he lives in the same city. To just take him to the door and walk four amos with him. Why? There's a mitzvah which we will be indulging in, engaging in, malave malka. We have to accompany the queen, the Sabbath queen. What are we doing? So I think one idea that occurred to me about the mitzvah of milaveh, is that when somebody comes into your home and if you just let him leave without accompanying him, the message you're sending is, you're leaving, that's an event that's happening to you. It has nothing to do with me. I'm here, I'm going to be here, I was here, and you can go your own way. But when we accompany someone to the door and we walk with them, we're sending another message. We're saying, you're leaving is something that's happening to me because your presence enriched me, enriched my home, enriched my experience. And now that you're going, I want to express that. I want to say that it's not only something that you're doing, it's something that I'm doing as well. It's something that I'm experiencing. Of course, Abidon, for the 12 years that he spent in yeshiva, wasn't a guest. Okay? He was one of the most important figures in the whole system, the whole yeshiva, the whole institution, of Darfi no institutions. But in a sense, it's important for us to tell him that you're going is something that is not only you're something you're experiencing, you know, something that we're experiencing as well. That is something that is happening that we're going to feel, and therefore we want to walk with you and accompany you and show you that your being, your leaving us, is something that will affect us and something that we want to express to you. So, again, mitzvah of Hakara Satov is, I think, Derech Eretz Kotma of the Torah. The mitzvah of Livu is part of the mitzvahs of the Torah. So, in the 12 years, I may say, you'll probably say it too, you, don't, you gained a lot, you grew a lot, right, from that meeting with, with us, you, before Rabbi Karlinski met you in Los Angeles. I want to take a little credit too. <laughs> right, before, before you went to Los Angeles, um, and then we pursued you there too. Um, it was a, a great opportunity, but it's something that you're leaving will have a great effect, has it had a great effect, and we want you to know that as we go with you. So would you please come up again so I can give you a couple of things.
So, as everybody knows, um, we've had the Ad Journal, which so many people, so many of you, and others from Kutzlars and all over the world have contributed in honor of Rav Gibbon. But we decided that an online ad journal, which everybody will be able to see when we get to the yeshiva, and everybody will be sent to everybody here, but that's not personal enough for us. So we had two copies printed of the online ad journal, one for you and your family here. And because we knew your mother was coming to participate, <laughs> and uh, have a little nachas, and uh, the mother, your mother and family who supported you. There's another copy for her to take back to Chicago, Skokie, and uh, so to share with the family back there. And uh, I guess so. now, everybody's been looking at this easel, which is a Yoram Ranan print. The print of a Yoram Ranan painting. As you all know, Yoram Ranan is an alumnus of Yeshiva, who unfortunately had a major loss in the fires of the last uh, I Lots, lots of this precious painting. Um, so we decided, now the painting that we picked, your wife chose it. So, <laughs> so you will like it. once told me a story, and it goes like this. When the Leshem, who was the grandfather of Rabbi Yashiv, wrote his Sefer on Kabbalah at the end part of the 19th century, he sent a copy of that Sefer to Maran Yosef Chaim, to the Benish Chaim in Baghdad, who I think was 100 years ago just now that he died. And when Rabbi Yosef Chaim received the letter, the, the Sefer of the Leshem on Kabbalah, he dressed in his big day Shabbos before reading it. And that story was not known to the Leshem for many years. And towards the end of the Leshem's life, he was told this story that Maran Yosef Chaim, the Ben Yishchai, donned his Shabbos clothing before approaching the Sefer of the Leshem out of great honor for what he had received. And when he heard that story at the end of his life, the Leshem said that he had a taina. He was disappointed by those who had kept that story from him. Because he said that perhaps had he known that story earlier in life, who knows how much more he could have accomplished. And so I thank you very much for the encouragement of this evening's honor. It's true I tried to convince Rabbi Karlinsky to honor somebody else, <laughs> uh, but I appreciate it very much. I want to thank all those who are here. I want to particularly thank my mother, Shatichia, who came from Chicago. I know that my stepfather also would have loved to be here, and I thank him for all the contributions that he's made to us arriving at this night. L'haldu ben Chaim l'chaim, I thank my father, Harini Kaparas Mishkogo, who passed away just 10 weeks ago. And Lahavdil, I thank my in-laws, Shayichu, for all that they've contributed to my activities, to my growth, and to allowing us to arrive here. I want to make special mention of Rabbi Chaim Pollock, who, in addition to being uh, well-known in Yerushalayim as the head of the Michalal of Anot and Bayit Began, uh, is not only is he a Chicagoan, but he was the Rav of our shul in Chicago, in Skokie, uh, from the mid-1970s to the mid-1980s. 
and is in many ways uh, still a rabbi of mine and a rabbi of our family. And it's a special schuss for me that Rabbi Pollock took from his busy time to be here this evening. I want to thank my wife, Miriam, and my children uh, for being here as well and for all that they've contributed to the in-shabbases, to the hosting of our, of our students in, the, in our home, to the Yomim Tovim, Simchas Torah, and Shavuos that we spent in the yeshiva, and the day-by-day -day work that we did in the yeshiva, which really Miriam has a great share in, uh, an equal share in, and these children also have a significant share in. I want to thank the Rosh Yeshiva and Rabbi Shuren uh, for hosting me this evening, for hosting all of us. I want to thank them for their very kind words. I want to thank Rabbi Schuster, and I and I spoke in some length when we had a little more intimate gathering in the yeshiva about the special the special relationship that we have. I want to thank him for his beautiful words tonight as well. I wasn't expecting the symposium of my work. <laughs> uh, I want to thank all of the rabbin and the staff for their friendship and for all that I've learned from them. From Rav Meshulam, who taught me the difference between a hanicha and a bishlama, and I know now that they're not at all similar, uh, to Rabbi Hirschfeld for teaching me a, an example of wisdom and open-mindedness, to Rabbi Karlinsky for teaching me about dedication and hard work. And from them and on, to people like Rabbi Yellen, Zechert Tzadik Levracha, who taught me that the power of always having a good word can brighten a person's day. To people like Ronnie Yona and Sharon Weiss, who taught me that it's always better with a smile. I want to thank the Chappelle family and all the supporters of the yeshiva, including the alumni that are here and have donated generously. I want to make special mention of two alumni that are here that really warm my heart. One is Rabbi Michael Citrin, uh, to whom I owe my relationship with Chappelle's we were classmates in graduate school in the summer of 2000, and he told me, you know, I think you'd like the place that I learned Chappelle's, and he introduced me and got me my interview with Rabbi Hirschfeld. And I want to make special mention of a man who I had to write into my notes, Rabbi Moshe Friedman, the rub of the New West End Synagogue, the United Synagogue in London, who was in my shear 12 years ago at Chappelle's, and with whom I've maintained a very close connection. And I want to thank him very, very much for surprising me and for all those who kept it quiet for being here, it really means a great, great deal to me. I don't have the words to describe it. So after thanking my family and the Rosh Yeshiva and the Rebbeim and the supporters, I actually want to take a pause and I'll come back to my thanks after sharing a couple of thoughts. I heard in a shir from Rabbi Aaron Rakefet 15 years ago that he was describing and he said the least important time for a Jew is the present. He said the present is just a bridge between the past and the future. He mentioned at that time, he said, as he was teaching Torah in Yerushalayim to students, he said, now is the least important time. I sit here in this classroom, he said, and I hear the voice of Rabbi Soloveitchik and Rabbi Rucham Gorelik 50 years ago giving shiurim. And I also hear the voice of the students in this room saying there she earned 50 years from now. I'm just here to bridge the gap. I'd like, in the moments uh, that I have with you, to share a few teachings of my rabbeim and my teachers that I think, that I hope, perhaps, can reflect on the work that I've been Zofa to do, and also a little bit of an understanding of perhaps what the future could look like as well. I was blessed to have a professor, Dr. Alvin Schiff, a very great figure in Jewish education in New York. And Dr. Schiff once said that there's really no such thing as teaching. There's only learning. He said that a teacher's job is to facilitate the learning of the students. And he even went as far as to say that we should change the verb. He said you really should learn the students, not teach them. Because he said when students, if you're in a classroom and people are not learning anything, then there's no teaching going on. Because there is no such thing as teaching. Teaching is just a facilitation of learning. So if no one's learning, there's no teaching. I used to translate that, and I still say this sometimes to my students in Nerla Elif, that for me what that meant, and I would introduce my shiurim and Chappelle's this way, was that the teacher is the least important person in the room. 
we were just there to facilitate the learning of the students. It's really about the future, it's really about the experience and what's being gained. My father, Harini Kaparas Mishkovo, used to answer the highly politicized question of who is a Jew by saying that a Jew is he whose grandchildren are Jewish. He was focused on continuity. And in my own work in the yeshiva, I was also trying to be focused on continuity. Focused in the learning through developing the literacy of the Talmudim and the yeshiva so that they could continue to learn after they left and pass on to their students and their children what they gained with learning with us. And also in a sustainable approach to Avodah Hashem and to making good choices that would give their own children and grandchildren the best chances of being Shomrei Torah Mitzvos. My Rebbe, Rabbi Meir Yujin Zecher Tzadik Levracha, he didn't give too many tests when we were his students in 11th and 12th grade in Chicago. In fact, he gave one test in 11th grade and two in 12th grade. And when he gave those tests, he would bring food with him to the classroom. And he would walk around the room and he would pass out food, wafers and those colorful jelly things that you could usually only get Pesach time. <laughs> and he would say that he would say that, look, I have to give the test. The principal says, I have to give the test. He says, but how much can I make Jewish boys suffer? <laughs> so I did the same thing. I gave tests to Chappelle's, and I would always bring food with me. In fact, I made a point of encouraging the yeshiva to try to serve as much food as possible <laughs> uh, at meals and at shiur, whenever possible. A great Rebbe of mine, he was really a professor, but I consider him a great Rebbe of mine. Rabbi Chaim Feuerman Shayichia, professor at Yeshiva University. I was very connected to him, and I visited with him just about a year or two, about a year and a half ago, in his office in New York. It was my first time in his office. And I was taken by the large number of awards and diplomas that he had. I even liked going to the dentist, actually, to look at the diplomas. <laughs> and I, I noted with tremendous interest Really, three diplomas. His 1950 BA from City College. His 1957 smicha from Masifta Rabbeinu Chaim Berlin. But the one that caught my eye more than any of them was his diploma from the Center for Modern Psychoanalytic Studies after he had completed a one-year program in psychoanalysis dated June 2008. 58 years after he graduated college. I was simply blown away by the example of a man being a lifelong learner, a lifelong student. An ethos that is captured in our most esteemed term, a Talmud Chacham, one who continues to learn. And so with this, I want to unpause my thanks. I thanked the, my family and the Rosh Yeshiva. I thanked the Rabbeim and the donors. But I want to pause now, unpause, and thank the students. The students of Chappelle's and Midrash of Rachel are lifelong students. You inspire me, you inspire the Rosh Yeshiva and the Rabbeim. You all came to Chappelle's and Midrash of Rachel as adults, hungry with an appetite for discovery and self-improvement, in your 20s and 30s and 40s. You, the people in this room, are the Jewish people's greatest promise for a bright future. What's more, the support that you provide for the yeshiva and for Midrash Rachel, the help that you provide to ensure that more students can learn at Chappelle's and Midrash Rachel, that also promises a bright future. And so tonight, I thank my parents and I thank my rabbinim. I thank my wife. I thank my Shoshan and Willig siblings and my family. And I thank more than anyone tonight the outstanding students and alumni for all that they have done for me. Shavua Tov, Yashukayach, and thank you.